The other day I was in Hobby Lobby and I saw that they had several bolts of gingham fabric in different colors. So I picked up several colors and I was holding them up to myself in front of a mirror just to kind of visualize how the fabric would look in a dress. And the dress that I want to make is a vintage pattern. I ended up buying six yards of this gingham fabric. It is a cotton blend and I needed six yards because it was only 45 inches wide and I want to make view A which is this long dress here and the pattern is rated as easy. I am planning to cut out a size 8. These are the pattern pieces that you need 1 through 5 but you also need 1A and 3A. Piece 1A and 3A are extension pieces so they get attached to the corresponding front and back pieces of the dress. The dress is really long for me so I'm going to cut off about two inches from the extension pieces just so that I can shorten up the dress just slightly. When I woke up this morning I felt like cooking today. I don't know what hit me but I got up I went to the store and I bought chicken carrots and potatoes and I put those in the crock pot with a sauce it was a recipe I found and then I bought a cabbage I saw this recipe where you can make cabbage in the oven and I was like what I want to try that every time I make cabbage I just cook it on the stove top so I was like oh if you can put this in the oven that is going to save a lot of time and that should be really easy. So that's what I did. I was just itching to try it out. <laughs> so I have my cabbage in the oven and my chicken is in the crock pot. So everything should be done in a couple of hours. I have this nice size piece of scrap paper left over after cutting out pattern piece one. So what I'll do is I'll save this paper, I'll fold it up and then I'll put it with all of my tracing paper and I'll use some of this whenever I need to trace something or adjust a pattern. There are some gathering stitches right here in this front area of the dress. Here is the front band and the collar. So I stitched all around and then you turn it inside out. So this one is flipped out and now I just need to press it. There is a dot down here at the bottom on the collar and the band. So you're going to slip stitch these two pieces together from the bottom edge up to the dot that was on the pattern piece. The center of the collar and the band should line up with the center seam on the dress. I marked 5 eighths of an inch away from this edge here and also the same from this edge and I marked it in green. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge of the collar and the band and line it up on that 5 eighths of an inch line that I made just so that I can make sure it's even on both sides and then I'm going to pin it down and then stitch right on top all the way down over and then do the same thing on this side. Place it down and I'll probably use a little bit of glue to help this stick. I'll just stick that down and then stitch down and over. I tried the dress on. It still is a little too long so I will have to take off over an inch on the hem. But I'm almost done. I just need to put on the sleeves and hem the dress and then that should be it. I am going to add sleeves but I can actually see this garment being sleeveless and that would be really cute too. The sleeves have gathers around the cap 
of the sleeve and the sleeves are short I decided to go ahead and lengthen my sleeve so I'm gonna have long sleeves on my dress I had enough fabric left over to make a top so I'm actually making view D right now and after making the dress I've decided that when it comes time to attach the collar to the front instead of pinning it down 5 8 of an inch over I'm going to come in just a little bit and I'm going to make my line about a half inch from the edge and then I will attach it that way. I haven't stitched my collar down, but I just wanted to show you why I've decided to move it over a half an inch. So once you have your front all sewn and ready to attach to the back piece, this is the back piece, you'll line up these edges and you have a dot here and you also have a dot here on the back collar piece. And these two dots should line up and your notches of course, which are right here, line up the dot and then you'll stitch from here over to the dot right in this area here. What happened for me was because I had it at 5 8 of an inch this front was a little over here and so it fell a little bit short and my dots weren't lining up. I was able to fix it and make it work but this time around by moving it over a half inch, it will line up a lot easier and better. Here is a ruler that has the half inch marked on it. I'm just placing it along the edge and making a mark all the way down. This is the front neck opening. So I'm just gonna go all the way down, mark the half inch mark, and then use a little glue stick and place it along the green lines. I'm gonna go down further, but I'm gonna show you what I'll do next. I'll take this glue stick that I recently purchased and I really like, and I'm just gonna press it over the green line all the way down, and then I'll take the front collar piece and then press it right on top of the glue and then I can stitch it. The shoulder seams have been sewn. Here is the back facing. Now what I'm going to do is just fold in the side edge of the back facing here and then also on this side here I'll fold in this edge and then I am going to fold it down and attach it to this seam allowance here on the shoulder edge and that's just to keep everything nice and neat. And I'll probably hand stitch it, I'm thinking, but yeah, I'll do that for this side and then fold it over and do the same thing on this side. So I'll fold it over and then attach it to the shoulder seam. And I need to press this and trim and all that good stuff too. I finished the neckline. I have everything all nice and secure. And now I'm going to pin together the side seams and stitch those together. And then after that, I can work on the sleeves. The pattern hem is supposed to be one and five eighths of an inch. The top is really short even before hemming it. So if I were to hem it one and five eighths of an inch, it would be really, really high up on me. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do a tiny baby hem around the bottom edge. You could lengthen the front and back pattern pieces if you don't want your top to be so short, or you could also add a ruffle to the bottom. I think that that would be cute too.
I did want to mention that the sleeves on this top were supposed to be finished with a cuff and I just decided to do a one inch hem. So the other day I was uh, watching TV, or no, I was watching YouTube, mm -hmm. and I saw this lady making cabbage in the oven. And, oh, I saw that. You saw that? Yeah. Cause I didn't know that you could do that. So right. I was like, what? But you know what, now that I think about it, I have made Brussels sprouts in the oven. Mm -hmm. So it does make sense. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here taking these greens and putting them in a bowl. I haven't been up that long. Well, actually I have been up for a little bit of time, but I'm just now getting out of the bed. I've been in the bed watching videos and reading a book, which I love to do. I love to read. That's another passion of mine, like sewing. I'm eating some potatoes and some sausage. I'm going to wear my lavender jumpsuit that I purchased from Amazon. The family reunion that I mentioned I was going to, it is today. Here's my husband's shirt. I'm ironing it for him and it's pretty close to the color that I'm going to wear. These are the shoes that I'm wearing. They're nice and comfortable. I bought these to wear when we were in Greece and they are so good for walking around. So I want it to be really comfortable today. Look at the food. So there's oh, some Lord. chicken. Let me go around. Some ribs, more ribs, burgers, hot dogs, macaroni, green beans, baked beans, and more green beans. And then there's a table of desserts over there. It's taking forever to make all these green beans. I'm not too much, some of them. Oh, okay. You know that? Yep. That I got a pan. You got a big pan. You got a big pan. You know that ain't got no sugar. Green beans are so good. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. I'll take it. That's why I, want, that's why I wanted to know. The reunion was cool. I'm wearing my know me pants, these cargo pants with a white shirt. And we're going to go visit some family and just hang out. And we'll be leaving tomorrow going back home. But yeah, we've been having a good time. The reunion was fun. It was really hot outside, which I was happy about. And we got to eat plenty of food and plenty of sweets. Okay, I'll have to try it when I get home. Bananas to get, I want to no, try that water. Really that's the not, that water doesn't, sound good. doesn't sound that bad. Yeah, it's interesting. But I saw them, they had a bowl of watermelon, they squeezed the lemon juice on it, and they tried it, and they were like, okay, let's see. And they said it was really good. That sounds like that could probably be. It might be, it might be worth a try. I'm going to have to definitely give that a shot because I'm always cutting up the watermelon. All right. Yeah, but I usually drink a smoothie so I'll have watermelon and strawberry and blend that together and that's a really good drink. It is mm -hmm. it's so so good and so refreshing. Watermelon and strawberry. Yes. So good.